Welcome to the Sister Speak Show, where contemporary meets vision, sound, and action. A talk show for great minds that create, inspire, and evolve. Sister, spiritual inspiration shared through the arts. Sister, spiritual inspiration shared through Ayana. When can you listen to the Sister Speak Show? At 7 p.m. Central. Tune in on the go or at your residence show. Spreaker YouTube, Alexa, or SoundCloud. Interviewing special guests that have been blessed and will bless us. Through spoken word and awareness, knowledge is felt. If you gain and share this in the streets, in the burbs, anywhere that we can be heard. It's about that time to elevate your mind. Feel the beat, sister speak, come and eat a spiritual treat. It's about that time to stimulate your mind. Feel the beat, sister speak, come and eat a spiritual treat. Welcome, 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 my brothers and my sisters to coming to the stage on the Sister Speak Show. How are you doing today? I am Ayana, the hostess, creator, and producer of the Sister Speak Show. Kingdom Child Recordings, executive producer of the Sister Speak Show. The Sister Speak Show airs live and on demand, but tonight we're airing live, my brothers and sisters, on the outside of Dallas, Texas, Cedar Hill, Texas to be exact. The Sister Speak Show airs live and on demand Sundays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and really other days of the week, depending on my special guest schedule. But my brothers and sisters tonight, speaking of a special guest, oh yes, brothers and sisters, you know I keep them coming. I keep the phenomenal guests coming, the dynamic guests coming, the ones who are impacting the community. Oh yes, they come on the Sister Speak Show. So my brothers and sisters, you're listening to some gold tonight, my brothers and sisters, So how are you? Welcome to all of my first-time listeners, and welcome back to all of my regular listeners. I miss you all, and I'm so glad that we can speak this evening. Brothers and sisters, even though I am just a little bit under the weather, I'm here. I am here. So let me tell you what you can catch on the Sister Speak Show, but let me tell you, my special guest tonight, Poetic Tigress, my brothers and sisters. Oh yes, she's coming to the stage. Oh, yeah, she will be calling in, and we are going to vibe and find out about this queen, my brothers and sisters. So shout out to all of her supporters listening this evening. Sundays, the platform. Tuesdays, coming to the stage. Thursdays, the culture climate. And we also have the tour and the lifeline, my brothers and sisters. Excuse me, the laugh line, my brothers and sisters. I am so excited about all of the segments of the Sister Speak show. So let me tell you what you can catch on this show. First of all, we are syndicated on Amazon Alexis. Big ups, big ups. Okay, so you're going to get special guest interviews, live performances, in-studio interviews, and live on location reports. These special guests who will be on the Sister Speak show are dynamic, and they are impacting the communities with their passions. The Sister Speak show is a talk show that will keep your mind and soul informed energized and encouraged this is a cultural renaissance platform my brothers and sisters that influences a climate that is conducive to who you are and who you should be no reckless entertainment just responsible listening nourishment honey we don't go dumb we go wisdom on this show so my brothers and sisters before my special guest calls in I just want to share something with you this evening because on this show we teach, we encourage, we inspire, we uplift. That's what it's about. We are here to make sure that you understand that there are talk shows that have class. There are talk shows that have dignity. There are talk shows that cover the issues that are affecting my brothers and sisters. And I just happen to be one of them. And and, and I'm not the best, but I feel in a matter of time I will be one of the best. That's just me being humble, my brothers and sisters. Support is a vital ingredient in this journey. You know, that is one of the services that this talk show provides. So my question to you, my brothers and sisters, this evening is, what does your support consist of when it comes to your people and the launching of their new businesses or their artwork or 
you know, if they are a play writer, if they own a boutique, if they're a performing artist, like what does your support look like? Because I know that we all know several people who have it going on as far as owning their own business or have ventured out into their own passions and have created a lane has been created and their gifts have been stirred up and they're not sitting on their talents. So what does your support look like to the people that you know? Are you just sitting back waiting for them to make it? Pop? Bubble? Arrive? You know, why is it so easy to support and eventually idolize celebrated people who do not know you? The equilibrium is off. The balance is off on that. Why is it so easy, this question is coming up again, to support and eventually idolize my brothers and sisters? Celebrated people who do not know you. I mean, absolutely, just they don't know you. But you are supporting their every move while your brother and sister to the left and to the right is struggling, hoping that her own people, hoping that his own people will rise up and support See, when you don't rise up and support, I'm just going to keep it 100 with you. This is how you get cut off, removed, denied, deleted, dismissed, forgotten. <laughs> Listen, I read a post that says the reason why you cannot publicly support someone is because you have talked about them privately. Now, just being 100, we all know that this tongue is able to curse and bless and we all know that we have talked about people before we're going to keep it 100 I've done it you've done it but at some point in our life we've got to get to a point to where we are not lifting up our tongue on people privately but then smiling in their face publicly that makes us look crazy so I'm saying this tonight as an encouragement, my brothers and sisters. May our tongues be rebuked <laughs> and purged from the unrighteousness and slander that flows from our lips. And may we be delivered from being two-faced, backbiters, ditch diggers, and jealous. Then our tongues can overflow with peace and a blessings and, and blessings, you know, to say a clear yes or a clear no. You want to be solid because people will remember you. I have a sister right now. I've known her for a very long time. And as we grow with this show, I will never forget her. She will be remembered. Why? Because of everything that she has done supporting me. I support this sister. She is supporting me. And I will never forget her. When I get to a certain point, trust and believe she will be remembered my brothers and sisters so listen my special guest is going to be calling in and i hope you all appreciate what i just shared with you because we can all upgrade we can all step our game up we all you know need to be checked and chastised that that's what this life is about you know to be selective in your support or to be selective in how you you know, as far as referring a brother and sister, that jealousy is really, really taking over and it is causing several brothers and sisters to shake their heads and wonder, my brothers and sisters, what's going on with my people. So for those of you listening this evening, I thank you. I thank you so much for supporting the sister that's coming on. I thank you so much for supporting the Sister Speak show. Right? That's what it's about. And when my special guests come on this show, oh, we highlight what they do. That's what we do. We support. Okay, my brothers and sisters. That's why when you go to the Sister Speaks show and you look at all of the episodes that have been created thus far, check out these dope brothers and sisters. You know, it's very important, brothers and sisters. Oh, we have a special guest calling in this evening. Brothers and sisters calling in live, my special guest on coming to the stage. Let's give her a round of applause. Poetic Tigress, brothers and sisters. My sister, how are you? I am blessed, how are you? I am blessed as well. We're going to let this applause play out because you deserve it, queen. Just want the people to know this. <laughs> 
So what's going on, my sister? Brothers and sisters, we got Poetic Tigress on the phone. What's going on, Queen? So I am, I am coming out to the end of a completely abundant energy cycle. You know how you get in those spaces where you just get so much confirmation and so much affirmation mm-hmm. and so much um, inspiration that you just need like three days to process it all, <laughs> but you know that the universe is pushing you. That's, mm-hmm. that's where I'm at right now. Oh, that is a beautiful thing, my sister. So let's just get right into it. Where are you from? So I am from Washington, D.C. I can't say it's a state, uh, but I grew up there. I was not born there, but grew up there since I was a little bit of baby um, and still claim it as home, even though I moved to Philadelphia. I'm about a year ago. I still consider D.C. my home, my family, and my heart. Well, brothers and sisters, I thank you for sharing this queen who was raised in the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C. I thank you all so much for letting this queen coming from Philly be on my show, brothers and sisters. Thank you for sharing because sharing is caring. So my sister, how did you get the name Poetic Tigress? Uh, so um, I, I think I've always been a poet, so I wrote or a writer. So I am the child of two writers, and I wrote my first book, or actually self-published my first book, when I was eight years old, and it was called Pierre the Cat Comes Back. In that book, um, I put it together. I had somebody illustrate it, and that book is actually still sitting on my mother's shelf um, with my my words and my stories. And so I have always written poetry, and that is the way that I keep myself centered and sane. Mm -hmm. Um, So my poetry has always been around kind of what are those thoughts that you have in the dark. Yeah. You know, that, that go across your mind. So if you go to my site, it always says wandering and wondering, because those, those are the things I do. Mm-hmm. Um, the tigers came later. <laughs> so, that, uh, I'll give a disclaimer. Now, your phone is breaking up. Your phone, sister, hold on, hold on one second. Sister, your phone is breaking up just a little bit. Let's okay. let's clear this connection real quick. Brothers and sisters, you know, we are live and these things happen. Okay, go ahead and say something to me, Queen. So I was going to say, uh, yeah, Perfect. this conversation is going to be the adult conversation. Okay. So we keep the language PC, but the topics are definitely going to be the adult topics. And so I got the name Tigers as a nickname given to me uh, by a previous lover, honestly. Uh-huh. And so... Um, when I was younger, he, he liked what I did and, and just said, you know, you're a tigress. And so that stuck, mm-hmm. um, kind of stuck with, with other people in other places. And so as I moved myself in my poetry to be more erotic and sexual in nature, um, so it covers the gamut of everything from you know, deep introspection to stream of conscious Mm -hmm. to, you know, not quite hardcore erotica because I'm I'm definitely a poet, but, uh, you know, some some things that that get in the weeds, um, I put the two together. So that's how I became Poetic Tigress. Wow, that is amazing. Okay, now, so we just heard that. Let me tell you all something, brothers and sisters. We do have grown conversations on here. We don't hold anything back. This is a mature show. We do keep it clean, but we keep it 100, too. So I want to piggyback just for a second because to create your own book at eight years old is absolutely amazing. So, you know, just a little bit on that, like, what was the, like, what motivated you to write that book? Um, honestly, like, I have always been a wordsmith. I could read when I was about three, um, and just words speak to me. Yes. You know, that's how I communicate. That's how I, you know, I need to write things down. I need to, I need to talk it through. I need, I need to see it on paper. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I was writing and somehow or another it came out that, oh, you know, I had these, these poems and these stories and it was like, well, we can put a book together for you. And so, and so that's what I did. And so, like I said, since then I've always kept journals. Mm-hmm. Um, I moved a lot of my poetry and stuff to be electronic. So I still have a lot of the stuff that I've written, you know, in emails from college and sent to people. And so it just never was, uh, I never questioned it when the when the universe hands you a gift mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and that gift comes out you know one of the things you learn early on is 
to write it out and to never question it and mm-hmm. to embrace it. And so right. now one of the things, you know, for me right now, what's really big in my life, the two, the two areas I say are transformation and authenticity. Mm. And so, you know, it would be inauthentic of me to write only poetry about love and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. essays about, you know, life and dating and not write and express the other side of me. And right. so one of the things, you know, the last two years, I've been writing, you know, keeping this stuff up for, for more than 10 years now. Mm-hmm. So um, I always keep it authentic. But yeah, I don't I don't know what possessed me at eight years old to put a book together, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm telling you, shout out to you and your focus and your drive. So as you went on, you know, was there anything particular that you did in high school that catered towards your gift and your passions or how did that journey work through high school? Um, well, high school, I didn't do as much, but I think once I got to college, that's really where you started to see it. Mm-hmm. And so in college, I actually minored in theater and did a number of acting. Um, we had in my college, we had Black Underground Theater Association. And so Mm-mm. go ahead. That and able to, you know, we performed plays from Amiri Baraka. We were blessed enough to actually have August Wilson come to campus. So I actually was honored and blessed to do a play. August, one of August was in stays in front of him. And we did, you know, different open mics and, you know, just had that, that kind of experience. And I think after college, I fell out of that. And I don't think I quite embraced my ability to, you know, transform or use both my words and my voice. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in college it was easy because it was right there, but right. after that I, I really fell out. So I didn't do my own work for the first time until this year, quite honestly, since hmm. college. Right. Um, I easily performed other people's work, and, you know, if you asked me to do a reading, I, was, I would do a reading, right. but I didn't kind of perform my own work until until quite recently. Wow. And so what was that feeling like, you know, performing and uh, in front of, I'm assuming you had a crowd before you. So, like, what was that experience? Were there nerves? You know, were you like, I've got this? And how did they receive you? So, it was it was interesting because it was a late-night jam session in Philly. Mm-hmm. And so, I was trying to kind of work with the musicians and, you know, kind of feeling myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, from a standpoint of I, I was going to this jazz concert and that place turns into an open mic. And so... Um, I was completely nervous. It is it is one thing to, you know, read somebody else's work and embody that. But when one of the things when you're reading your own work is, you know, these are my inner thoughts. I mean, if you if you read them, you know, these are the things that I think about that come across my mind, you know, late at night. These are things I don't talk about to people. And if you ask me, I probably won't talk to you about it. <laughs> right. Or it's there. <laughs> uh, because it makes me nervous, you know, uh-huh. so it's making yourself vulnerable, it's making yourself open, but again, as part of this thought process of living authentically and living your best life, I'm forcing myself outside of my comfort zone, I'm, I'm creating spaces to perform, I'm mm-hmm. creating spaces to share my work, I'm creating spaces like you know, creating spaces on Instagram, creating a website, you know, actually telling people, hey, I have work out there, and here's something that you may enjoy. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it was more more nervous, not for the people, but I think, like I said, some of my work gets really raw sexually, so Mm -hmm. you wonder, like, if my mother is (laughs) (laughs) you know, talking about... uh, talking about some of the things that I talk about. Yeah, um, that that's a shock to, you know, when your mom finds out that her little girl isn't a little girl anymore, you know, and next thing you know, she's like, um, that poem that you wrote, um, I, um, you know, I like it and everything. I just didn't know you had that in you. You know, parents are the last, to, <laughs> parents are the last to find out that their children got a little freak in them. Sometimes, I'm just saying, you know, that they have a little, you know, have a, you know, sensuous, they are sensual and, you know, have um, deep sensuality and, you know, are so in tuned with something that almost, you know, is, I hope, I don't know what it is now, but I grew up in an era where it was taboo to speak about 
eroticism and, you know, uh, to, to focus on that. I, I grew up in a home where it was like, that's not discussed. Just don't come home pregnant. Um, don't have sex, you know? And I think that if more of, uh, parents were comfortable with talking about that, that, you know, I think our, I think our brothers, especially our younger brothers and sisters, they would have more education under their belt and might be less likely to be as curious about, well, let me see what this is. You know, let me see what it means to be touched with a feather or let me see what it means to be caressed or, you know, things of that nature, you know, because children are curious. So I do think that Maybe maybe it's different now. I don't know. What's your take on that? Do you think it the, the taboo aspect is not as intense as it used to be when it comes to, you know, sexuality and, and, and parents talking to their children? No, I actually think to some extent, um, I think those taboos are still still there. Mm-hmm. And I think we actually need those talks more than ever. Yes. And that's that's because of the internet, quite honestly. Mm-hmm. I mean, we joke about, you know, hiding boobs on, on television, but any 13-year-old with a smartphone can pull up, you know, 20 free videos of people having sex oh, with no, you know, with no problem. And, yes. and because of that and because of the lack of information, we need to tell our children what they're actually looking at. Right. We need to, to have them understand to feel comfortable with their bodies. And particularly for men, there, there's, and, and how we look at our boys, um, we need to, to get them to understand that women's bodies are not their possession. Mm. Um, we need to also get men to understand that their manhood is not defined by their sexual conquest. Right. And so, you know, with all of these concepts and all of these, you know, all of this Hollywood about um, coming out and all those talk about R. Kelly and Cosby and those mm-hmm. things, Mm-hmm. However you feel about it, the discussions, and I'm sure you've heard it, we've all heard that, oh, well, girl, young girls are fast, or yes. young girls are this, and, and young black girls, you know, we all have a story of being, I have a story of being 13 and being picked up by a 25-year-old mm. who's trying to pick me up who knew I was 13. Oh, so, ugh. God. You know, but, but my story is not uncommon. No, it's not. And, and that's... It's, it's not, right? So every one of my friends has a similar story mm-hmm. of some, some guy, you know, who, and, that's, and that's the problem. And so we have to start teaching um, both, both young boys that women are, don't belong to them, that no matter what they're dressed like, no matter what they're saying, like, that is not your property. You, mm-hmm. don't, get to, um, you don't get to touch them or squeeze them or touch their mm-hmm. hair without permission, mm-hmm. right? And we need to get women to understand that, you know, their sexual agency and their worth is not tied to their perceived virginity. Right. Right. Mm, That was deep, sister. Ooh, brothers and sisters, you see why she's on the Sister Speak show. I'm telling you, I find the gems. I find the ones who have a story and a journey and wisdom to share with you, my brothers and sisters. And, you know, when you spark, when you're talking about, you know, a young boy being able to download 20 videos, so is, you know, and, and also a young girl being able to download, you know, pornography. And I've always, I, I've said a few times on my show that pornography is the worst teacher when it comes to teaching. Teaching you how to lay with a man, how to lay with a woman. And it's not by accident that pornography was created. It, the most beautiful act that, that we can experience is coming together with our mate. And the most beautiful act that also comes as a result of that is that life can be created from us coming together. And so that's a special time. That is not a time to be defiled. That is not a time to... Go and, like you said, you know, have this sexual conquest where you're trying to take down everyone that you can, you know, because I think a lot of brothers think that they, you know, they have conquered a sister once they have ejaculated. But you, you know, what you have honestly done is almost left your soul ties with that sister and created um, a situation that you weren't trying to stay in for the long haul. And so we have to teach our young boys and our young girls that. You know, sex is not a weapon that um, coming together is a blessing. And they, and you know, I look on Instagram and I, 
honestly, when I was 15, I wasn't hot. I wasn't sexy. I, I was a normal 15 year old. But nowadays, these girls got shirts falling off their shoulder, giving you lip, serving you face, you know, and you look at the comments and then here comes, you know, Mr. Perv, you know, the perverts that are seeking to devour these young boys and these young girls because young boys are preyed upon too. You know, um, pedophilia is real. And the problem is, my, my queen, the problem is this, that a lot of um, our brothers and our sisters are suffering because of something that malfunctioned with the act of sex as a young, young, young man, as a young woman, I'm talking about molestation, being mm -hmm. exposed to something that um, completely ruined their whole minds, you know, um, being like you said, 13 years old and being picked up by a 25 year old, you know, I used to teach and it was so crazy that the 21 year olds and the, you know, 25 year olds were trying to have a full blown relationship with a seventh grader, you know, and they would just, you know, peruse on through the streets, you know, just going back and forth when school would get out trying to pick up these young girls. And I used to be like, oh my gosh, like what world are we living in? But there's so many people who suffer mentally from not knowing how to be a sexual being, not knowing how to use their penis, not knowing how to use their vagina, you know? Um, and the next thing you know, you have, uh, sexual assault cases. You have um, young boys and young girls who can't control their urges and they start raping. You know, they're, or they're having orgies or they're running trains and all these things. And brothers and sisters, this is really happening. So I feel like our young boys and young girls are in a crisis. What do you think? So I, I, think, uh, I think a lot of that, and, and I'm gonna talk to adults now. Okay. Um, because I think what the, the behaviors mimicked by adults um, to filter down to children. And I mm -hmm. think one is, obviously, the communities I keep, I am a very judgment-free zone, right? My, how I feel about people's sexual activities is people should, should give consent and be fully informed to make yes. a decision that works the best for their life. Right. So I have no judgment on lifestyle. I have no judgment on whatever you like to do. As long as everybody can consent without coercion, um, do you, mm -hmm. right? You know, y'all adults, get it. Do, do, it, do what works for you. Um, but that mindset, but the mindset of toxic, both toxic masculinity and toxic femininity trade run down to children mm -hmm. um and so those mindsets of a girl you know and i think you're right about the trauma and a lot of people do have trauma around sex because unfortunately a lot of people's first sexual experience is not positive it's no. not one like you said i can't you know i know many women who were sexually assaulted at a young age be it you know not maybe not a full rate of molestation or somebody inappropriately touching you um, you know, and that could be a number of people. And so working through that and kind of working around that and being able to heal, you know, takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, but those are the, that's what you're seeing down in children. Like, I am not against, if you're an adult and you are into group sex and that is your thing, do it. That is not, you know, that is not my, my problem. But what happens, though, is we have to hide these things and we can't have conversations. And so, again, children mimic what they think adults mm -hmm. do. So I, I'll give an example. I went to, a, um, years ago, I went to an under-18 club in New Jersey mm -hmm. where they didn't serve alcohol. And the children were there doing things, and obviously I am open. <laughs> you know, I do things. I'm an adult. Um, you know, I got at my birthday party, I got I got publicly, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, naked, but like, you know, I have a friend who's in the lifestyle, so she was like, you're going to get your birthday licks, and I was like, okay, we, we, we got that. But I was appalled at what these children were doing, mm -hmm. and the reason I was appalled at it was not what I was seeing, but the lack of engagement on their face. Mm. Right? So if, I, if I'm at a party or I'm somewhere and I'm dancing with a guy and we're getting it in and we're in the corner doing our thing, 
the engagement of my face is I'm excited. I'm into it. I'm getting my, you know, your sexual energy. You know how that starts rolling through your body. Mm-hmm. Um, and that shows, right? If you look in the corner, you think you've seen somewhere, you're going in the corner. Um, or I remember one, one time a lover and myself were on the, on the New York City subway. And folks, I could see people watching us, and we were just looking at each other. We weren't even talking. But our energy was just like we were having this whole conversation wow. with our eyes about what was going to go down the second we got to his house. Mm-hmm. That translates. But what I saw in this club was boredom, was apathy, was disengagement. And that's because they're so young that that's how they think they have to get attention. And that's how they think that they have to um, be, be popular. And so there's, there's nobody telling them differently about, you know, here's something that you can enjoy with sex. Or here's something that, you know, why, why it's important to wait until a point of where you can make decisions with your emotions that are sexually engaging. So I think, I think it, it comes from that behavior is mimicked from all of those toxic behaviors from adults, and it translates itself in even far worse ways for children. Wow. <laughs> that was deep. Excuse me. That was uh, pretty deep. The apathy, the lack of engagement, and, you know, you know I think because how I see... Uh, coming together with with your mate, I feel like that is something that is a gift, and it is something that should be beautiful, engaging, and you know, I feel like nobody, you know, you know, women used to say, "I got the bomb," or you know, brothers would sit there and say, "I, you know, I, I lay it down, I handles mine," you know, and it's just like, you know, I think that brothers and sisters get to a point to where. They don't have the value for it. You know, it's just very interest. It's just very interesting um, that so many people uh, disengage in something that's supposed to create life. You know, I, I could just go into it over and over again. I just see so many brothers and sisters that do need to step their game up that, you know, could learn some things uh, to do to create um, a life that is, you know, that is respecting the gift you know i just i don't know i just i just think that a lot of people need to take time out and learn how to be celibate and this is why i say that because you know going all around uh giving up your body uh whether you're a male or a female you know there are consequences that come with that we all know that there are relationships that 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 go south there are people who end up getting killed as a result of um you know, coming together with somebody and the person just becomes so obsessed with them. You know, there's sexually transmitted diseases. I just saw a commercial yesterday. It was a horrible commercial. It was really bad. But it was a commercial for HIV medicine. You know, and it's just like, wow, these people were bold enough to say, hey, I contracted HIV, you know, from from engaging in sex. And, you know, even though they were used to sell the pill, they, these were supposed to be real life HIV, you know, people who had HIV. And so it's just more of, you know, um, the consequences, you know, the people who say, hey, you know, wait till you get married or, you know, I used to work for TAP, teenage program, and I used to go around all over doing uh, presentations about sex, having safe sex, how to use a condom, how to use a dental dam, how to use all of these different uh, barrier protections to keep yourself from being completely at risk, you know, um, showing them pictures of STDs and, you know, even having people come and talk about how their decision went left and how they're living with this thing, you know, talking to people who have herpes and, um, chlamydia, syphilis, gonorrhea, uh, HIV, you know, there's this thing called, (laughs) that people are in a stir about called the blue waffle. You know, when I opened up that book, sis, I was thoroughly disgusted. And I said, I don't ever in my life want my vagina to look like this. I don't ever in my life want to have to pose for an STD book. But it's real, you know, and and the fact that there are so many diseases that are, you know, that supposedly aren't in the United States, but there have been some outbreaks, some cases. And so my brothers and sisters are suffering as a result. Some of them are suffering as a result of engaging in sexual activity, not 
um, waiting, not, you know, using protection. And, you know, we all, I'm not going to say we all, but some of us understand what it is to engage in premarital sex. Some of us know what it is to engage without using barrier protection. Let's not get too grand. Let's not get too, you know, sedity. We got to keep it 100, brothers and sisters. And so... The alarming rate of people coming into Planned Parenthood, the alarming rate of people dropping dead, not being able to have kids, you know, the alarming rate of syphilis. Now, it's so funny, because, not funny, but it's tragic because old men have the highest rate of contracting syphilis and younger girls have the highest rate. Why? Because there's a lot of sugar daddy sex going on. There's a lot of coming together with, with women on the street who are not clean. And these are the things that affect more that, that are way bigger than just pleasure and, you know, pleasure and pain without, uh, having the proper teaching, you know, you see, the young girls, I, re I will never forget when I was teaching at a continuation high school and this young girl, I uh, had a class called self-love and this young girl had tested for several diseases. And when the doctors went to give her a pap smear and opened her up with the speculum, th they said the inside was raw. And this girl was only 16 years old. Inside, raw, infected, completely, um, quote unquote, diseased. And to be 16 years old and to hear, hey, you may not be able to have children. You need to contact all the people you've been with. You know, it gets real. It, it, it gets real when you start to itch. It gets real when you start to drip. It gets real when you start to discharge. It gets real when you have to look to the left and right and be like, what's that? What's that smell? And now you have to get to a doctor to figure out what's going on with you. And then next thing you know, you enter into the pharmaceutical trap because now you have to take doxycycline, tetracycline. You have to take all these cyclins <laughs> to, to cure what you have. And so, you know, it's, it, 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 it weighs on both ends because like you and I just both said, the lack of education. And, you know, it's really hard for somebody to sit there and say, I have, I have had an STD. I have been there before. You know, that's a quiet as kept. That's just between me, you know, and whoever. And the next thing you know, you know, um, they're suffering in silence. And so, you know, I just want my brothers and sisters to be aware. And I know that you all wear because my brothers and sisters are very talented, very wise. And my listening audience is very wise. So, you know, I want you all to listen to my uh, sister and her, her journey and her experience. And I also want you to hear me what I'm saying about being safe, what I'm saying about being wise, my brothers and sisters. My sister, I really appreciate you getting very honest with us because truth be told, my audience like this type of conversation. Girl, they like erotic poems <laughs> and they like conversations like this because it opens up the floor. So I thank you for opening up the floor tonight with that, my sister. So I, I do want to address some of some of the points because I, I think one of the things in our community, like our community has very high rates of transmission of a number of STDs, but part of that is I think there's a stigma attached. Um, and again, I think it goes back to, you know, I know you, you discussed about sex um, as a means to create a life, but that is the sexual energy does not always have to... Um, does not always have to, to be a part of that. So the first part is actually accepting yourself as a sexual being mm -hmm. and creating a space for sexual positivity. Because mm -hmm. I think we cannot have and we cannot go through and, you know, again, it starts with adults because children mimic adult behaviors. We cannot have conversations in our community shaming people for having an STD. Because mm -hmm. you can get an STD. I don't know if you remember the movie Kids. Oh, no, yes. Movie. Girl, you taking me back. Mm. All, of, all of the women in that movie were virgins. Yes, they were. Right? And hmm. so, it, 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 again, we, we have this sense of where we're trying to tie sexual promiscuity to STDs or try to tie sexual promiscuity to something negative. And unless it's coming from a place of trauma, 
that is a negative thing for me. Like if you're pro- if you're sexually promiscuous because you're trying to fill a hole in your heart that you know that you need to actually go to therapy and journal and do those things for. But if you understand and you're healed, and for you this is an act of of engagement of pleasure, and you also know that you don't shame people for other things that they can't control because we have no idea. Um, you know, as long as people are practicing safe safely, as long as people are, are actually having discussions, we have to create a space for people to be able to talk to somebody before mm-hmm. sex and say, you know what, I need to get tested. Let's right. get tested together. Right, right. Or to say, you know, I have this or I had this or this was an issue without it being, you know, a negative connotation. And, mm-hmm. that, and that's the issue is that we create these spaces where people, you know, I see it, you see it online all the time where people create spaces of, oh, well, I saw this um, or I saw this. Or they, they post, quite frankly, there's a number of things out there um, that don't exist that I've seen, you know, that you can go and you're like, this isn't real. And so understanding what the facts are and understanding you know, like I actually at one point was, you know, majored in biology. And so like most people don't understand like herpes. Like if I tell you right now that herpes is actually related to the chickenpox virus. Yes. And so if you've had chickenpox, you've actually had a form of herpes. Yes. Most people don't know that. Mm-hmm. It's only in the, the means of, because chickenpox is just transmitted by touch and herpes is transmitted through what is perceived to be intimate that we perceive one to be negative and one to be okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's why we have to, to create spaces for, you know, both sexual positivity so that whatever your whatever you feel like works for you in your life, we as a community can create opportunities for people to, you know, say that this happened to me, like the ad with HIV. Nobody wants to be that person in the ad, but we can't shame that person in the ad because something happened to them. Like, we all have something happened to them. People get, you know, people get diabetes. Like, I'm more worried about people in our community with high blood pressure and diabetes and heart disease that are literally killing us. Like, not just, like, you know, not just um, over time or something happens, but literally killing us, Mm -hmm. you know, at at alarming rates where we're not worried about that. But somebody's worried about a potential for something that doesn't exist. And so... Mm -hmm. That's where, in in my mind, we have to work to create a sex-positive community where we can talk about these things, and then that translates to children, because children don't feel the need to experiment. Children don't need to feel the need to mimic toxic adult behavior. Right. Thank you for sharing that. My brothers and sisters, so you heard the balance in our conversation. That's what the Sister Speak show is about, having a balanced conversation and respecting uh, perspectives and sharing our journey. You know, that's what this is about. So transitioning from sex to your poetry, um, do you have a piece that you plan on sharing with us this evening? Um, so I have a few. <laughs> okay. Um, so I have a few pieces that I can definitely read, um, you know, and so I guess, uh, you know, how the, how the conversation goes, um, you know, we, we can kind of shift shift the conversation yeah. um, to something. I'll actually read a little bit of um, something, since we were talking about sex, I'll actually read something uh, that I wrote not too long ago um, that was inspired by somebody. So um, Now, uh, excuse me, I don't mean to cut you off. I want you to share oh. two, two of your poems with us because that's usually how it goes on here. I want you to share two of the ones that you want everybody to hear. Now, is this going to be something that I'm going to have to put explicit on my show because I can't do it? Uh, I can. Hold on. Um, I will do... Because uh, I have senior citizens listening to this show. Too. <laughs> hey, senior look. Senior they get it in. Don't, don't sleep on the senior I know citizens. it. I know. Don't make me throw up in my mouth either. <laughs> don't, don't sleep on the senior, on the senior, uh, on the senior citizens. So oh, I, will I know. Do something um, not explicit. Okay. Uh, I appreciate uh, that, no, but but I will, but like I said, I, um, you and Nicholas Monroe and Haley Maj both write similarly because you guys do write erotic poetry. And so I've mm-hmm. told them as well that there's going to be 
a time for you to come on and share that. You know, it's going to be one of those little later in the evening type shows, but I definitely, you know, want to have, you know, my, my listening audience, especially the couples, um, to, to be able to have something that they can, you know, think about. So, you know, it, it hasn't been wasted. It will be shared, but what is the piece that you're going to share with our brothers and sisters this evening? Um, so the piece I'm going to share this evening, I'm going to uh, keep one short and one a little bit longer. Okay. Um, so one is just going to uh, talk, like I said, uh, some of what I write is stream of consciousness. Okay. Um, and then some of what I write, you know, has to do with, with myself and, you know, just kind of thinking about, you know, romance and love and, and what's happened and um, what's gone wrong. And so I am... Uh, uh, so one I'll read, um, so it's called The Path of Least Resistance. Mm. It's, uh, it's, I made you too uncomfortable. Too many questions behind, beyond your comprehension. How can I support you? What do you need in a relationship? What does honesty mean to you? My third eye inquisitive, inquisitive and recognizing frightened you with its accuracy. You never knew if you could measure up to the man that I saw in you. I let you lead, but you were afraid to stumble despite my heart there to catch us. And you weren't ready to fly off the branch. So you took the safe choice, the choice that offered no challenge, the choice that let you rest on your dreams of today instead of tomorrow. That choice was so easy and there was no curve on the grade because it was always A plus plus. Bay is amazing. <laughs> the choice where you could do no wrong. I mean, I want to be adored too. But for my fault, for my the real me. Baby, I get it. Because who wants to be pushed? Who wants to look at their decisions instead of it just happened. Supported to create deep roots based in awareness of one's truest self. Oh, yeah, I do. Brothers and sisters, let's give my sister Poetic Tigress a round of applause for the path of least resistance. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Keep it coming. Keep it coming, sis. Keep it coming yeah. now. This is, this is one that um, I actually just published this week, so I'll read it. Okay. Um, never was I, so it's called self-inflicted, and never was I into masochism. Pain is never my thing, except with you, I had what Miriam Webster so eloquently called a taste for suffering. And my suffering must be seasoned with lorries because it feels so good and I couldn't stop partaking of its bitterness hmm. because my imagination kept rejading myself with pictures of possibilities of hmm. you, hmm. me, and nothing but space and opportunity. But every masochist needs a status. And I needed you to be the marquee to decide and inflict the pain of rejection and tell me the hard truth delivered with things of objectivity. You never wanted me. You never desired me. The depths of my mind you never a place you were excited to explore. Never wanted the gifts I would have so gladly shared with you. In the kindest way possible, every action projected everything about me with a clear, loud no. Be harsh with me and tell me coldly that you prefer someone else over me. Hmm. Someone else that clearly made your smile bright and your heart feel big. Please, be a sadist to my masochist and let my heart know what it is instead of what could be. Ooh, brothers, one. brothers and sisters, let's give my sister Poetic Tigress a round of applause. Mm, 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 mm. It's nothing like sharing your journey through poetry and, and, and really speaking to the audience because the one thing I know about the audience is the audience can relate. They can completely relate. I thank you for sharing your gifts and your talents with us. One thing I do want to do is take the time out is for you to share with everybody all of your social media handles. 
So all of my social media handles are at Poetic Tigress. So Instagram is Poetic Tigress. Um, my website is www.poetictigress.com, and I am on Facebook as well as Poetic Tigress. <laughs> that makes it very, very easy. Um, like I said, I do have a mix of, of other things on there. Um, you know, erotic poetry. I have a couple of essays on there um, that are like non-sexual in nature. Mm. Um, just thinking about dating and life, and, and kind of exploring myself. Um, I have one essay on there, for example, talking about vulnerability and kind of my journey to get to vulnerability. Um, but I obviously have erotic poetry um, and things that I work out and read. So, thank you for sharing that. Now, what is your now? Let the listening audience know as far as events are concerned. If, if they can just go to your website to book you. They can just go to my website um, and send me a message through that, or they can send me a message through Instagram. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's the and like I said, I have I have a variety of things. Um, I perform more <laughs> both erotic and not erotic. Right. Um, I have a few things that I read and, and like to do. So. Oh, I appreciate that. Now, brothers, this is just for you because I know you. I know what you do. You are the DM king. You slide through those DMs. Some of you like to share nude photos with people, you know, and you can't stop it because once you open it up, there it is. And, you know, sometimes that can just be a little bit too much depending on the human. So when you get ready to speak to this queen, just because you didn't heard these poems and you have heard some other things and you don't look, be respectful when you speak to this woman, you know, don't, don't slide up in the DMs being Mr. Disgusting, Mr. Um, I like to say Mr. Slick, because I have had people show me some of their DMs and I'm just like, is this for real? Like, I mean, people are very bold. So brothers and sisters, this series, this sister is serious about what she does. So, you know, you can reach her on Instagram through her direct message. You can also reach her, uh, through Facebook. And the beautiful thing about it is she, like every other brother and sister that comes on this show, they are doing something. Here she said, check the website, okay? That's because her brand is available for you to check out. And who knows, you may be having a, you know, a, a bachelorette party. You may be having, you know, um, another type of party. I don't know what it is, but sometimes I have seen where they have poets, they have poetess coming to these events and sharing these poems. So there is a lane, there's an avenue for this type of work. And this sister does that along with other, other talents that she has. So understand that. Now, one thing I wanted to ask you is, do you want to give a shout out to anybody who is listening this evening? Um, so I do want to give a shout out to a couple of people. Um, one is Figure Fourplay, who is a fellow writer like me um, and writes some of the hottest fire um, that I sometimes repost um, on my Instagram that I have read. And I want to give a shout out to um, the fine intellect for always supporting me and, and being there for me. Um, so those two people, they know who they are. Um, and I'm glad you, you did mention the, the DM comment because I think one of the things is women who are sex positive, you know, again, this goes back to that, that, toxic, that toxicity. Mm -hmm. um, there's a perception that we are Jezebel. There, there's this perception that we are open to having sex with anybody or there's a perfection, perception that we're out here swinging, you know, <laughs> and working from chandeliers with anybody and everybody. Wow. And, Nothing is further from the case, you right. know, like me expressing myself and, and being open and honest about my sexuality, you know, does not indicate that I'm going to be honest and open with my sexuality with you. Uh-uh. Um, mm -mm. mm -mm. And so I think, <laughs> and, and, you know, again, creating spaces and understanding that I am a person, I am a fully formed human being, you know, I have thoughts, I, I do a lot of things outside of this, and so, you know, if you read my poetry on, you know, I had something open, you know, I was trying to figure out what I was going to read about, you know, my stream of conscience, I have a poem about John Coltrane, you oh, know, wow. thinking about his music and what that does and what that means, but how do you engage, and mm -hmm. so, um, you know, understanding that that is a, a small part of, of what I do. Um, I do do performances, so like you said, I, I do go out and do performances. I've actually um, 
read something at somebody's wedding before. So like I said, I do think a lot about love and the topic and, you know, we didn't get to it, but thinking about dating. Um, so I do a lot of things in thinking about, you know, creating spaces within the dating community that we can be positive and that we can come together, particularly in the black dating community mm-hmm. where we can create spaces to uplift each other up and deal with each other as people um, and not as archetypes of, you know, what what is perceived. Well, I appreciate you for sharing that. Brothers and sisters, she's diverse. She is available for serious inquiries, inquiries, depending on how you say it, Grey Poupon. Um, I mean, I'm just saying, though, you know, some people are fancy with how they say it. And, you know, why not? fly her out you know that's the main thing about my brothers and sisters to come on the show i want the listening audience and the audience abroad because we are syndicated on amazon alexa so this is a show that is international you know that my brothers and sisters would be able to come out and perform you know paid trip hotel accommodations treat them like the humans that they are they deserve to tour they deserve to be a part of your function and so you know i just want my brothers and sisters to understand that we've got to start putting our eyes on who is around us and we have many brothers and sisters who are talented so don't sleep on poetic tigress that's the only thing i want to say to you so sister is there anything that you want to say um before we go ahead and end this show because i had mentioned earlier to the listening audience that i'm under the weather today but i could not not do this show the show must go on and so i want uh well, if, it's a, if it's okay i like to end with something a little bit different okay um, and read something quickly just a little bit in a sure. different kind of vein okay um just again and then that that will um well, it is. So it's called Stream. Okay. And thought, melancholy, needing to be held, to transfer, to receive, to submit, to be dominated, to relieve myself, to give over thought, but trust, but trust, but trust. Not for the faint of heart, not for the weak. Physical, wrong, but fear, but doubt, but overthinking, but the seeming wonder, but the overjoy, but this skin, but this waiting, but these thoughts, but this anticipation. Mm. Brothers and sisters, I mean, let's just give Poetic Tigress a round of applause. Oh my gosh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I love the fire. I love the fire. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Brothers and sisters, this has been a wonderful, wonderful interview. I just want to know, would you be willing to come back on the Sister Speak show again? And did you have a good time on the Sister Speak show? I did. And absolutely. Just let me, let me know when and where. Oh, yes. We're going to definitely. I'll be somewhere. I know it. Look, look. And I'm, not I'm, only... sit, I'm doing this. You know, I did this. I'm sitting in a hotel room in Albuquerque just making sure I have time for this. Though, so. I appreciate you so much. That is a blessing. You know, I know you're on the go. <laughs> Excuse me. I know you're traveling. And I just really appreciate and I'm honored that you would take the time out, you know, on your journey to sit and speak with the brothers and sisters, sit and speak with me and to just share who you are, you know, just a little bit. We haven't seen it all, brothers and sisters. You know, you have to have some mystery, but we have listened to this sister share her journey, share the fact that when she was eight, around eight, she created her own book, that when she got in college, she started picking up with the poetry. And then just as of recently performing in front of people, you know, doing, doing readings and things of that nature. You know, we all have a journey and this sister came in on her journey and shared with us. And so I'm forever grateful for that. My sister, this is not goodbye. This is just going to simply be, I will talk to you later and I will send you a copy of the show in your direct message, as well as your Gmail. So you can have that to share with everybody else. Brothers and sisters, I think we're pleased with this sister this evening coming on. So my sister, like I said, this is not goodbye. This is I will talk to you later. All right. Until next time. Yes, queen. I'll talk to you. Okay. Okay.
Okay, thanks. All right, mama. Brothers and sisters, hey, word up. <laughs> oh, my gosh, brothers and sisters. I am excited that she took the time to call in. You know, she's all the way in Albuquerque. This sister's traveling all over the U.S. doing what she has to do. Oh, stand up and represent. Brothers and sisters, you know, you have been listening to Coming to the Stage on the Sister Speak show. This is a syndicated talk show. Spreaker, YouTube. Amazon Alexa, SoundCloud, you can catch the Sister Speak show. Um, when I tell you that the show is fire, it's fire. I do this, okay? And you all make it be so dope. So shout out to my listeners. I mean, you're the bomb, okay? So listen, brothers and sisters, the time has been well spent. I am going to get ready to drink me some hot tea. I am getting ready to get in this bed. And I am getting ready to sleep with my mouth open. Hello. And I am getting ready to make a lake on the pillow. Oh, you all know about drooling when you are extra tired. Ah, come on, brothers and sisters. But listen, brothers and sisters, this Thursday on the Culture Climate, we have KJ Peoples. Not only is she Miss Plus Size Alabama 2000, Mrs. Plus Size Alabama 2015, she is also a plus size model, obviously, and she is a female truck driver. KJ Peoples, queen, ow, in the house. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is going to be so dope. And when I tell you that the line up for November, the line up for December, and the line up for January, January, you booking all the way into January? Oh, for sure. The, sh- the show doesn't stop. <laughs> and I keep running into more and more dynamic phenomenal guest so i'm so excited to bring special guests on the tour the culture climate the laugh line the platform and coming to the stage and brothers and sisters i'm not going to announce it on this show but very soon there is a very there's a segment that is going to be introduced to the sister speak show that is going to touch your heart that is going to raise awareness and i won't tell you what it is right now because I want to, excuse me, I want to create the promo flyer. And there's just a way that I do things. But when I tell you, you want to tune in. Because this particular show that I'm creating, this segment that I'm creating, is going to help out so many people. So many people. i just been thinking about it and I said, you know what? I am going to join those who have dedicated their podcasts, their shows to this particular cause. And I'm going to come on board. That's enough for right now, brothers and sisters. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So listen, brothers and sisters. The time is winding up. I want you to be better today than you were tomorrow. I want you to work on your communication. I want you to work on uh, your affections. I want you to treat your husband good. I want you to treat your wife good. I want you to hug your children, love your children. I want you to hug yourself, love yourself. I just don't want you to touch yourself. I'm just being honest. Just being honest. So brothers and sisters, lock your doors, close your windows. I want you to drink some water before you go to bed, some water when you get up. And I want you to pray with Without ceasing. I want you to be better today, better tomorrow than you were today. Brothers and sisters, I want you to push through and I want you to be encouraged and inspired. If you are sitting on the brink of, excuse me, on the brink of something that will help the community, do it. Don't sit down on your talents. Don't sit down on your passions because you don't want to have to give an account as to why you were letting fear and lack of faith stop you from doing what you need to do. I'm just saying, brothers and sisters, I'm looking out for you. I'm impressed with you so far. So listen, this is Ayana signing off from Cedar Hill, Texas, live recording of Coming to the Stage. Brothers and sisters, I will speak to you later on. So you have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye now. No, not bye-bye. I will talk to you later. Take care.